Well, hi everyone, welcome to the Buffett and Beyond Stock Analysis video, and we have a doozer for you today, folks. You don't want to miss this. But remember, if you want to live on this beach like Jimmy Buffett, you've got to learn how to invest even better than Warren Buffett. And today we're going over Target and Budweiser, and Budweiser is now Anheuser-Busch in Bev because it was bought out and so the symbol is still BUD, B-U-D, and we're going over Target. Now the question is, is it better to work at selling your product or to make a political statement? Because as you've all been hearing, that Target and Budweiser both made political statements. And folks, whenever you make a political statement, you're going to lose half of your audience. It's just the, because 50% of the people are, are positive and 50% of the people are negative relative to what you're saying, no matter what you say. So let's get right into it. And let us look at, these are the average stocks in our database. So we're looking at the clean surplus return on equity. And what is the clean surplus return on equity? It is a return on equity, like your bank account, but it, it includes bottom line numbers. The accounting statements that we see today have all sorts of non-recurring items in them, different types of depreciation, and on and on. So clean surplus allows us, and this is from the research, allows us to develop numbers, develop net income, which is the clean surplus earnings, and a new book value or owner's equity so that you can compare one company to another. And the 22 years of research, well, you're going to see that at the end. So we'll take a look at it then, right now. So here is the clean surplus return on equity of the 18 or 1900 stocks we have in our database. This is the net income, which is the clean surplus earnings of the average stock. And this is the revenue of the average stock. Now let's go over to Budweiser over here. And we can see that it has a smaller clean surplus ROE than the average stock. And right now for the past five years, and these are five year averages right now that we're looking at, in the past five years it has had a negative earnings number, so that's not too good. And it has a little bit above average revenue number than the average stock in our database. The problem is they're not taking this revenue that they're making and turning it into profits. So we have a problem there. Now let's look at Target. Target has a better than average clean surplus ROE. It has a better net income or clean surplus earnings than the average stock in our database. And it has a better revenue income than the average stock in our database. So at looking at Budweiser versus Target, Target is indeed a better stock. And we would also think that Target should outperform Budweiser and should outperform the average stock. So let's take a look. Now, for those of you who want to look at the numbers, we want to look at the Budweiser clean surplus return on equity. And you can see with the average stock being about 13 percent, we can see that it has pretty much been below average the entire time that we have on this chart. Target, meanwhile, w with the average stock with a 13 percent ROE, has a better than average clean surplus ROE. So this is something we want to look at as we're going further. So what does this bring in into perspective here? The, the thing that it brings into question is what about the political statements both Budweiser and Target have made? So let's take a look. And now we are looking at the year to date. Black line is the S&P 500. So we compare everything to the S&P 500. Now this red line down here is the retail ETF. And if you look over here, that symbol is XRT. So we're looking at the retail ETF, which has been underperforming the general market. This is year to date again. It's underperforming the general market. So you would think that both Budweiser and Target would have headwinds, and they certainly do. So here's Budweiser here, and here's Target down here. Now remember, the numbers we just looked at said Target should be a better 
returning stock than Budweiser, and it should be a better returning stock than the stock market averages, in this case, the S&P 500. So what is happening here? Well, we might be able to deduce that since both Budweiser, Blue Line, and Target, this mustard color line, are underperforming the retail ETF, that there's something else going on in their performance, and it could be their political statements. Now, let us look over the past five years. Black line, again, is the S&P 500. And this red line is the XRT. So it's the retail ETF. And you can see sometimes it's below the S&P. Sometimes it's above the S&P. And sometimes it's equal to the S&P. So some people might say, well, should I be in the retail ETF? And we're saying you might as well be in the S&P 500 because you have a better diversification of stocks. And the S&P is outperforming over time the XRT, which is the retail ETF. Now, but that's not our question here. The question is, where is Target? Target is this yellow line, and where is Budweiser? And Budweiser is all the way down here. So we can see, even before any political statements were made, or even before this latest year where so many things have underperformed the market averages, that Budweiser has underperformed the market averages since about forever, or since this, this chart, which is the past five years. So Budweiser is not a stock to be in your portfolio, folks. And even though it has a dividend, uh, we don't care. It's losing too much in equity. And of course, right back here, you can see that it is under pressure because of the political statement it made regarding selling its Budweiser beer. Now, let's look at Target. And Target had been outperforming the S&P 500 all this time. And it has been outperforming even in the past couple of years until recently, but also recently, the XRT, or the retail ETF, has declined. So has Target, but Target has declined more, hasn't it? And Budweiser is just starting because its political statement was fairly recent. Well, so was Target. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at that Target may be overblown because of the statement that it made. So Maybe, maybe this is a buy-in situation for Target. It's not in our portfolio because our portfolio, we want to see a stock with a 20% clean surplus ROE. Now, remember our 30 stock portfolio has 30 stocks in them, and they are the stocks with pretty much the highest clean surplus ROEs out of our 1,800 stocks. And let's go back to Target's clean surplus ROE. We only see one year where it was better than 20%, but it has been doing pretty good, better than the average stock, not high enough to get into our growth portfolio. So even though Target has been hit lately, and it looks like it has been hit more than usual, and hopefully it will come back, that maybe it has been overdone on the selling aspect of it. Now let's look at how over the past 22 years, the bottom line is the S&P 500, how it's performed. And this line is Berkshire Hathaway. And this line up here is our growth portfolio, our 30 stock growth portfolio, which we change stocks in it pretty much once a year. And we don't change all the stocks. We change five or six stocks a year. That's the average because out of 30 stocks, a lot of the stocks remain good stocks. There have been stocks in our portfolio for almost 22 years, but we change a lot as some stocks become older and become what they call in marketing a cash cow. So the growth is out of the company and they're paying it all out in the form of dividend. And a lot of you like dividends rather than growth, but we have a growth portfolio. And you can see all the way back here, we have just about always outperformed the S&P 500. And recently, in this growth peri period of the past four or five years, up until 2022, we've done very, very well in the growth situation. And then, of course, like everybody else, we had a pretty hard time in 2022. And now we're just about back to our high point once again. So just want to show you that if you use a system 
that works, then you stay with the system. If you don't have a system, then you don't know what works and what doesn't work. Because I can remember one person coming up to me and saying, I hate systems. I said, well, then if you don't have a system, then you don't know what works and what doesn't work and why it does work or doesn't work. So the key is to use the clean surplus return on equity. Use it like your bank account and you can compare stocks to other stocks. I mean, we're even outperforming Warren Buffett himself. And this is his Berkshire portfolio, which outperforms the S&P 500, but it's not outperforming our 30 stock growth portfolio. So folks, just for watching this video, you can get a free trial. Just go to buffettandbeyond.com. Here is our email or our site down here and sign up for the two-week free trial. Don't even need your credit card. And guess what, folks? That includes that computer program where you can sort the stocks, all the stocks in our database, 17, 1800 of them, from the highest ROEs to the lowest ROEs. And then you can pick stock yourself from this computer program. But there's a few other things we want to work at, look at, but you can look at that on the videos, on the tutorial videos that are on our site. You have two weeks free trial on that, folks. So take advantage of it. All right, folks, we came out with some conclusions relative to Target and Budweiser, and most of us want our companies that we invest in to do what they do best and that is market the products that we all like and that we all use and stay away from the public area there's another place to fight that fight and it's not with your stocks or with your products so as we have seen you can get punished for that so anyway stay in the political form with your politics stay in the investing form when you want to make money so folks we had a pretty good week this week so you go out you relax you enjoy yourself and folks, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. And remember, if you want to live on this beach like Jimmy Buffett, you've got to learn how to invest even better than Warren Buffett.